Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where Clements and, and <laughs> I uh, aim to answer your bike and tech and maintenance related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions in the comment section below using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and uh, we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. <clears throat> yeah, right, first question is from Flen Allum, I don't know the username. Hi GCN, looking to upgrade to carbon wheels with clinchers for my road bike. What are some key tips to look out for so I don't accidentally buy gravel or other types of wheels? Specifically wondering if Reynolds Cycling AR29 XDB wheel set will fit my disc brake with 28 mil tires, thanks. Well, the difference mostly that is gonna come from carbon wheels is the internal rim width to account for the width of tyres that they're designed to work with. So traditional road bike wheels, you're looking anywhere from say a 19, 21 to even a 23 millimeter wide internal rim width for modern standards. Much wider than a 23, you're starting to go into the region of where you're nudging towards the gravel sizes. Yeah, that's what I would say. I think the other thing I would say is there's two broad sort of camps now within carbon wheels, um, and that is hookless or hooked. Yeah, that's a big difference. You know, and hookless is slightly lighter, but the, the crucial <coughs> thing is you're limited by tyre choice. Yeah. And you're limited in tyre pressure. So hookless, you can't really run above sort of like, what, 70 odd PSI? 73.9. So if you're wanting to run yeah. 25s in there, you're probably, and you're below 80 kilos, you're probably going to want to run slightly higher pressures than that at some yeah. point. Um, and if you're a big guy, you might want to run higher pressures as well, just on bigger tires, just because you know you weigh a lot more yeah. than like 80 kilos. So, yeah, factor that in, factor that in, um, and then you might want to rule out hookless as a result of that. Okay, right. Next question: Who we got? Uh, we have Carlos Brodit, who says I've got an 11-speed group set, and I plan to upgrade to 12-speed Ultegra Di2. Ooh. Should I upgrade the cogs on my direct drive internal trainer to 12-speed as well? Yeah, simple answer. Your direct drive turbo trainer is going to have the same cassette and setup as what the bike is is going to go on it. The spacing, <clears throat> the spacing is different, so it won't. You'll just get horrible misshifts and grinding. And a bit oh, just yeah, be dreadful. Don't do it. Don't do that. Next question then is from Ludwig five three seven zero. Really awkward situation. I tried to remove my self-extracting crank brackets FSA Gossamer AGX Plus, and the M8 hex bolt was rounded. Don't ask me why or how because I'm not that strong and only used a quality hex key. Can the crank and screw be removed by a local bike shop without destroying the crank or should I just saw it off and buy a new one? Ooh, <laughs> you know what, if you've not ever you if you've not ever done one of these self-extracting cranks yeah. before, they can be a bit confusing. They can be a bit of a mind bender. Yeah. Especially um, if they've been on the bike for a while, maybe it is just properly seized in there. Yeah. The thing that springs to my mind is you've got to weigh up if you take it to a local bike shop, how much they're going to charge you? Because this is going to be like a fairly labour intensive job. There isn't like, oh, we'll have it done in 10 minutes. So then you're going to get a fairly high bill from the bike shop. Whereas you've got to decide whether the crank is actually worth that like big bill. Yeah. And if it's not a power meter, <coughs> you know, uh, crank and stuff, yeah. there are like a lot of these kind of FSA or like Shimano or like well all different. Make sure you just get replacing yeah. it with the right spindle and the right spindle diameter. So being FSA, it's probably going to be a thirty mil spindle. But just there's a lot out there. You know, there's yeah. a lot of like used bargains on on eBay and stuff as well. So you should be able to find a replacement, and it might be worth. You, you're probably going to destroy it. Sacrifice it, and you won't. Yeah, you shouldn't have to spend <laughs> too much money to get a replacement one. I think that's probably the most cost-effective solution. Mm. Okay, next question is says, hi Alex and Ollie, I need your tips and suggestions please. I've built my own bike and you know, beginner mistakes. I miscalculated the length of fork, so I've cut the steerer tube a little bit too long. Oh, that's, that's not so bad mm. if it's too long. Maybe one or two millimetres, but when they tighten the top cap up, they're still playing the, between the frame and the, the fork every time they can every time they break they can feel the fork moving a little bit do we have a solution to fix this because they don't think they can cut such a small amount off the carbon steerer tube without messing it up just get a single spacer yeah and place that above the stem yeah and if you really don't want anything above the stem put a one mil spacer underneath and just accept the handlebars are one millimeter higher simple mm. that's a simple solution we fixed it yeah <laughs> who's next uh jan bernetti says, I have Shimano Ultegra Di 2x11 
uh, on my road bike. Can I change the current 11 speed crank set to the new 12 speed crank set without having problems? Thank you. Yes, not officially, but yes, you can. It'll, it'll work. Yeah. But I mean, there was this thing whereby riders were reportedly dropping their chains in races that was going last the other, year. That was going the other way. I know, I know. Yeah. But that was, that was like because they couldn't supply issues post COVID and stuff. <laughs> they couldn't always get the, the new 12 speed chain sets, but they were running 12 speed everything else. Yeah. And so then there was a bit of chain droppage. I've allegedly, actually, but. I've actually got that set up on um, Chloe's road bike. She's got 11 speed and I bought her a 12 speed crank. Yeah. yeah. So it so works fine. It will work, but it's not advised by Shimano. Yeah. Dan Tuber next, I have a rear tire with tiny surface cuts. What is the chance that it will totally rip open slash explode when riding? Is it worth a risk? Um, a GP5000 is expensive to replace. I mean, if they're tiny surface cuts, it sounds like it should be perfectly fine. It's, no, it's definitely not gonna rip open and explode. No, what I would say though, is if you're, I would say continue running it, um, but then, you know, if you're planning like a big event, and you're yeah. doing a massive like Grand Fondo or something that you've been training for for like months. Like a thousand kilometer ultra endurance event. Like yeah, you did. maybe put on a new tire. Treat yourself. Treat yourself to a new yeah. one for that, but for other stuff, you, you, yeah, you'd be all right. Perfectly fine, normal ride and training tire, I'm with you. Um, last question, Ollie, who have we got? Chris Rides Bicycles um, has said, I'm looking to get new handlebars. I'm currently on a 40 centimeter, but in aero hoods position, oh, my nice. wrists still point <clears throat> outwards. So I guess I can go narrower and more aero. What's your take on slightly flared handlebars that some pro teams use? Is it the best of both worlds? Aero on the hoods, more leverage sprinting on the drops. Any downsides? I feel like they've almost answered their own question there. That's the idea of the flared drop bar on the road. Hmm. Um, it brings you in to be super aero, and then when you want that leverage, that's where you've got it. It's almost a um, similar principle to on a gravel bike, apart from on a gravel bike it's flared, so you've got even more stability on the drops. Um, so yeah, I think um, go slightly narrow if it was me. Yeah, I would, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Try it. All right, that wraps another GCN Tech Clinic up. Hopefully we've got your questions answered. Put them in the comment section down below if we haven't, and we'll get to them in a couple of weeks. Adios.